This problem is really getting into the harder types of buoyancy problems that you'll see in this course. Um, so in this case, we have some object that is partially submerged, right? It's just floating on the water. Uh, so in this case, it's a stand-up paddle board. And you're asked to figure out how many people can float on it. Versions of this will be there are some boat. How much stuff can you put on the boat? How much additional cargo things can you put on the boat or something like this? Um, but these problems often involve a couple of steps that we're going to go through. Uh, so the first one is to realize like, well, what is the condition that we're trying to, we're trying to meet, right? We're trying to put as many kids on this board as possible. Uh, and so what we need to do is figure out when the maximum buoyancy is. So the maximum buoyancy of this, uh, sup stand up paddleboard boy and see uh, well that happens when you know I have I have my water right and it happens when the stand-up paddleboard is just fully submerged that's when the maximum buoyancy is right um, I can draw some people in here right but their their paddles having some fun, right? I'll leave those eyes like that. That's how that person is. So this is the maximum buoyancy and it's just equal to the full volume of the board, right? Right. So really we're trying to figure out what is the weight of the board plus the weight of the kids that equals this force, right? That's, that's the problem that we're trying to solve. But the, the problem is, is we're not actually given the, ma the mass of the, the board. Um, so that's the first thing that we have to figure out. We have to figure out the mass of the paddle board. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, we're told uh, a piece of information, right? We're told that um, there's the water and when the board has nobody in it, it's floating in the water, right? Such that this height is 0 0.08 meters, right? And the total height of the board is 0 0.12 meters. Right. Um, so this is actually uh, a balance of forces, like what we had in the iceberg problem, right? There's some buoyancy force that is, that is holding this up, Fb, and there's some mass, Fg, that is, that is weighing it down. And so Fb must be equal to Fg for this thing to be floating there, right? So Fb must be equal to Fg which tells us that, well, the buoyancy force is the fluid, uh, the density of the fluid, times the volume of fluid displaced, well, maybe I'll call it dis, times gravity, and that's equal to the mass of the board times g, right? And so we can rearrange this, uh, our g's cancel out, to get the mass of the board is equal to the density of the fluid times the volume of the fluid that's been displaced right now, right? It's not the full volume. And this is equal to 1,000 kilograms per meter second, or per meter uh, cubed. Um, and then the dimensions of the board, right? The volume of the board. There's 0 0.04 underwater, right? So the, the volume of the displaced fluid, just to make sure we're clear, is, is this volume right here, right? So it's 0 0.04 meters um, times the other, the other uh, dimensions of our board. I'm just gonna move this over like this. <laughs> times the other dimensions of our board, which were 0 0.7 times 0 0.3 meters, right? And it ends up, if we plug this in, we get 84 kilograms for the mass of our board. 
Okay, so that's that's the first thing we've figured out, right? But now, now we want to put kids on the board, right? So with kids on the board, we have to do another balance of forces, right? So I have uh, I have my my board, and I have my force up, which is FB. But now we're looking at this to be the maximum buoyancy, right? Uh, we're looking at how many kids can we put this on so uh, the buoyancy force can hold them up. So this one is the, is the maximum. And so this volume will be the volume of the board, right? The, the, the maximum uh, buoyancy happens when the displaced fluid is equal to the volume, the total volume of the board, right? And we have our force of gravity. Well, what's, what's our force of gravity? Well, it's mg, so it's 84 kilograms, right, which is the mass of the board, plus some number of kids times the mass per kid times g, right? So this is <clears throat> this is the equation we have to put together. And so this is the part that's a little tricky, is here's the mass of the board, and here's the mass of the kids. We don't know how many kids there are, so we, we use the number n to sort of quantify our ignorance. Right? And later we're gonna we're gonna want to solve for n. Like that's the that's the whole point of the question. Before we go on, we should be I just want to be really explicit. Um, right? That that when so I guess I should be really explicit. When these forces are balanced, it it means that the force, the board, um, the, the maximum buoyancy is equal to the force of gravity of the board with, with kids. Right, that's the thing that we're, we're trying to do. So let's, let's set these equal to each other uh, down here. So um, this is equal to uh, density of water, times the full volume of the board. Um, the G's cancel out, right? And this is equal to, I'm gonna just call it the mass of the board for now, even though I know it's 84 kilograms, I'm just gonna make this as general as possible, plus N times the mass per kid. And I wanna solve for the number of kids, right? So I have N, um, Let's see the board, volume of the board, I should say, minus the mass of the board, divided by the mass per kid. Okay. The let's assume it's fresh water. So I'm gonna the answer doesn't change if you use the other one. So it's a thousand kilograms per meter cubed times the the full volume of the board. The full volume of the board is uh, 0 0.12 times 0 0.7 meters times three meters. It's the full volume of the board minus uh, the mass of the board, which is 84 kilograms, divided by the mass of each kid, which is 30 kilograms. And I think if we do this, we get 5.6 kids. Um, but like, we can't have part of a kid, right? So the thing we have to think of is, do we round up or do we round down? Um, so this is the number of kids that can be supported by the full buoyancy force, right? Um, so if we round it up to six, it would actually sink, right? Because that would be, that would be too much weight for the, that buoyancy force to hold. So we actually round down, right? So this implies that there's five kids on the board. So this was a really long question, um, but there is a quick way of doing it. And uh, I'm going to just, I'm just gonna go back and appeal to this, uh, this picture to see this really quick way of doing it. So the thing to notice is that we went through all this trouble 
finding the mass of the board and then putting kids on it and doing this whole force balance. But we could look at this in a completely different way. We could look at it in how much buoyancy do we have left to support the kids, right? This whole volume that's above the water here, right? This volume is a volume that we can displace we can use to displace water to put kids on it. So the, the buoyancy created by this volume should be equal to the number of kids we put on, right? Because that's how much, how much sort of buoyancy we have left. So let's, let's try that out. Uh, what is the buoyancy that's left over from this, this top part? Well, F buoyancy top. It's uh, the density of water times g times this this top volume now right this top volume here well i'll call it v top fg is equal to the mass of the kids times uh, g times n right and these things should be equal to each other right because that's how much how much we have left over so if we set these things equal to each other and g v top is equal to mass of the kids uh, times n. I'm gonna get rid of this g. Um, I find that I should be a little more careful here. I find that n is equal to density of water times v top divided by the mass of the kids, right? And what is this equal to? This is equal to a thousand. The volume on the top is 0 0.08, right? That's how much that's how much volume is left up here. Times 0 0.7 times 3, and then it's divided by 30 kilograms of the mass of the kid. And lo and behold, we get 5.6 again, right? Which implies five kids. So this is a whole other way of thinking about it. If you understand the first method, well, this is just a little more advanced and it, it has to do with us thinking how much more fluid could we displace to create the buoyancy force we need to hold up the object on top of this board.